Hey, what's going on? This is Peter here with Real Estate Trends and Market Updates here with another podcast, uh, YouTube video, and currently what we're seeing here in the market, just giving you guys updates on a weekly basis. Doesn't matter if I'm having someone in the studio or over uh, StreamYard is what, what I use or getting them on the phone um, and kind of digging in. But I wanted to bring up this article because I want to make sure that we're all aware of kind of what's going on in the market. I know I'm, I'm fairly good about updating on a weekly basis, but that being said, let's dive into it. Um, the Wall Street Journal came out and said, at least this article headline here, is investor home purchases drop 30% as rising rates, high prices cool, housing market. So that is true. I do work with a couple of investors that have really taken a lot of chips off the table. They've adjusted and said, okay, well, hey, maybe this isn't the time for me right now. Um, I also work with quite a bit of wholesalers and people that are in the market getting off market deals and people have really taken a backseat or a very, very conservative approach. I, I know a lot of people, the 70-30 rule is basically purchase price for what the out price is. So let's say your out price is $100,000 and your purchase price needs to be 70K um, comparatively to you know what you're going to sell it for because that adds in, that's a rough estimate for what they look for. But that goes to show what they're ultimately going to be able to buy. Well, now they've reduced it down to 60%. So 60,000 out of 100K. And I I'm not sure a lot of sellers are there yet, um, depending on what their ability is to um, make sure that they're liquid. If they are at least pretty liquid, then they'll they'll keep their property. They won't sell it for a huge 40% discount, but um, you got to look at the numbers here. So, so let's see, they dropped 30%. And let's dig in this article a little bit here. Uh, companies bought around 66,000 homes. Uh, in the 40 markets tracked by real estate brokerages Redfin during the third quarter compared to 94,000 in the same quarter a year ago. Yeah, I mean, confidence is down, consumer confidence is down, um, inflation is up, and those things are going to take a toll, right? But here's the thing is you have big investors like Redfin and Open Door, which I've talked about before, that are now taking into account what's going on on the market and what's going on with the scenario between the purchase price and ultimately what they're going to get, right? So that's why those companies have really scaled back and laid people off because they see the writing on the wall. Okay, well, hey, we can't get it extra 15, 20% for the property, even if we buy it wrong. That's where the, those companies saved a lot of money. And that's, frank, frankly, that's where um, a lot of different investors save too on their margins, even if their margins were a little bit high or something like that, that the um, there's a lot of investors that put the data in when they look at a property. And now with the interest rates being up, two and a half times of what they were, you know, they're, um, they're really second guessing on even making a move on that property. So are any properties, I, you know, I have some clients that we've reduced, um, some properties and some just say, frankly, I'm going to, I'm going to release it out. So, so there's that. Um, let's see. And then, so we have bigger companies that you see that ultimately have more liquidity, or more room to move, even in changing markets. And one company came out recently, a couple of days ago, and said they're going to still buy properties, and they're actually joint venturing with another company to buy a billion dollars worth of real estate. Obviously, this is going to be over a certain amount of time. They're going to be very conservative about it, but they're going to be um, buy to rent properties. So ultimately, that person, you know, that big company is going to buy it and then shove people in to rent it. And Blackstone, BlackRock has honestly been doing that for the past couple of years. I think we're we're going towards a renter nation, to tell you the truth. It's uh, it's um, sad, and it's also, you know, you continue to see these big investors. And I'm not saying these investors are taking a huge lump sum, but what they're doing is affecting that purchase price value, even in a down market or a um, reduced market. And they're inflating it a little bit or giving, you know, that seller 
kind of the money that they want. So things you need to look out for, you need to be aware of when you're out there buying. Um, and then also just looking at the market, like, okay, well, who's out there buying and why are they buying? Well, some of these people are very, very, you know, uh, not so leveraged, but very liquid to be able to do this. You know, maybe they're sitting on companies like that, you know, maybe they're sitting on, you know, 500 million, maybe they're sitting on, you know, 600 million that they can allocate to these, to these different um, asset classes. So, um, and it looks like, you know, over the course of, look at here, they have a map here, um, or pardon me, not a map, a graph that uh, Redfin has. So Redfin basically has a graph that shows, okay, you have um, investor home purchase, uh, let's see, quarterly, and it's from 2010 to 2020. Actually, just just the 2022. So the crazy thing is, is investors. If you were down in the in, um, in the time and didn't have cash, which shows here, not a lot of people had cash in 2020 because there was only about 15 to 17 thousand people buying these properties investor wise. Now in 2015, there was about 35 to 36 thousand. Then you jump to about 2017, we're above 50,000, okay? And then just the beginning of 2020, we know what that was. That dropped to about 35,000 from about 62,000. So we're back to before the beginning of 2020, it's 66,000, okay? And at the end of 2021, we we're at 94,000. This year has been kind of bumpy, 94,000, then dropped to about 88,000, then dropped all the way down to about 78,000, and then bumped back up, uh, I don't know, probably third quarter of this year, or maybe you know end of second quarter, uh, up to 88,000, and then now has drastically dropped to 66,000, if you're looking at this. So what does that tell me? That tells me people are getting more realistic, They're, they realize, you know, there's a lot of people that there's a lot of money that flooded the economy. So people had extra cash to deliver and they were delivering it through, you know, different funds or they were ultimately going out there and doing it on their own. And now it's dropped. It's dropped, you know, um, a significant amount from 94 to 66. Um, and like I said, investors are looking at profit margins of 40 percent, you know, making sure that they uh, gauge between what they're going to sell for and what they're going to buy. So that's a 40% gap comparatively, you know, to other ones. So that's, those are things that we really need to, um, as a real estate professional or, you know, investor, make sure that we are running the numbers and we are, um, able to look at the horizon on interest rates, watching the market, watching the news and making sure, you know, don't get um, inundated with the news, but make sure you're on top of the ball when you're looking um, at what the next trends are going to be um, or what ultimately the economy is trending as. So, and then the Wall Street uh, Journal goes on to talk about how uh, some institution investors are now readily largely funded to snap home and snatch homes up just like JP Morgan Chase. Um, and I spoke about this a couple minutes ago, but 1 billion in houses that they're looking to buy. Um, and this is where some companies are going to go from a market cap of let's say 500 billion to a trillion or, you know, a billion to 20 billion because now they have the advantage of jumping in when property values, they could probably go in and offer on, I think they initially said um, they were going to do 250 homes. So they're going to go in and buy the 250 homes. They're probably going to buy them at a bulk cost. And, um, and Or if they don't, they're just going to have some agent take it just like a, um, a uh, uh, like a foreclosure account or, you know, a short sale account, take it as that, go out and try to buy. So things when um, you're looking at getting more market share as an agent, you know, make sure you're on uh, on Chase's good side to be able to maybe get one of those accounts because um, that's huge too. And then fewer purchasers um, by fewer fewer purchases for online 
house flippers or i buyers may be contributing to those declines for sure 100%. Um, Redfin decided to close its own home flipping business, Redfin Now, earlier this month. So they just talk about it here. Nationally, investors still um, accounted for 17.5% of all home sales in the third quarter and a higher share than they held at the at any time before the pandemic by Redfin's account. Okay. All right. So we, you know, they kind of discovered a couple of things um, that they were at for um, before Redfin, you know, kind of closed up shop. And then after uh, Redfin closed up shop, they kind of ran those numbers and you can see them here in the numbers of 94 down to, you know, 66. Um, and we bounced up and down there. So it's good to read these articles and read them all the way through, not just the headline. Um, and then this real quick before I jump off, because rents are huge right now, because I've, I've talked to a lot of people and um, it's kind of more prevalent where we have had to reduce a couple of rental prices. So rent growth has also begun to slow. Rents for single family homes rose 10.1% year over year in September, down from 13.9% in April, according to housing data firm CoreLogic, which is right down the street from us. So, um, yeah, that's uh, interesting to, to hear as well, because, you know, there's um, a lot of people that are trying to, you know, get into rentals, especially now with um, inventory still a little bit tight and you have... Um, property values not going down drastically with that high interest rate. So yeah, things you got to talk about and, uh, you know, work with. So thanks so much for uh, listening. And this is another Real Estate Trends Market Updates. Hit subscribe button and uh, check us out on um, uh, any anywhere you listen to podcasts. Thanks so much for listening, guys.